Welcome back to our home and we are still in the dining room continuing on with this project. You guys probably saw us stain our walls and as you can see they're looking nice. It's a little more rustic than I wanted for this home. Originally we were going to go more, I don't know how to explain it, but more of just a old classic home. Not rustic, not farmhousey. This is definitely vibing like rustic farmhouse. Yeah. But it's okay, we can still make it what we want with the details and I think it's going to come together well. Today we're working on the floor, the big moment that you've been waiting, waiting for. Yes, I always look forward to doing the flooring. We're going to get right into it. We're going to start by laying down our vapor barrier. That's a class 2 vapor retarder. It's going to help stop moisture. It's going to help slow down moisture from coming up through the floor. Yeah. That's especially important in here because we are laying this floor on solid three quarter inch board subfloor. Now this is not typical in a home unless you have an old home. Oddly enough, this floor isn't old. It's actually pretty new, but for some reason they laid boards uh, instead of plywood or OSB. So the problem with this is there's a lot of cracks and gaps that are going to let moisture come up from underneath. But also the obstacle with a floor like this is that wood is prone to movement. Boards like this, they're prone to expansion and contraction. So you gotta be careful laying hardwood floor over this. And one thing that we gotta do is change the direction of our hardwood floor. Throughout all the rest of the rooms, we were going this way, keeping it perpendicular to the floor joists. Even though our floor joists still go this way, we cannot carry the floor on the same direction because that's the direction they put their subfloor. And you never want a hardwood floor running the same direction as your subfloor. As these boards expand and contract, they're going to bring the top finished floor with it and you're going to end up with gaps and cracks and buckling because they're going to move like this and also if one of these is higher or lower or there's movement in them, it's going to translate into your floor. So what we have to do is run the flooring this way across the boards. Gives it more strength, more stability, it's going to stay flat. And while these boards are moving this way, when they expand and contract, the flooring doesn't go anywhere. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So we ignore the floor joists. What's most important is the top the subfloor. Just hope I can explain that right so you guys understand why we're changing direction and why it's better in this room to run the flooring parallel to the joists. The hardest part of this floor is starting. We have to make sure we're going to run square to the, uh, the flooring in the other room. I've done some measurements and I found that this wall is pretty crooked. It is about an inch and a half off from one end to the other. So we have to cut all of our first row at an angle to compensate for that for the wall angle so that we're running square for the rest of the room. But I think I got all my measurements figured out so I'm going to bring these out on the table saw and rip them into some long angled pieces and then we'll get our paper down and start laying this floor. It should go a lot quicker as long as I do this right. This sets the stage for the whole floor. If I mess up this first row, it's going to be nothing but problems later on. Wow. So the hard part is done. I hope so. Yeah, this should be straight and square and perfect. So we're going to work off of this and just hope for the best when we make it to the other side of the room. Yeah, it's fine. As long as it's fairly straight. I can't really count them in good right now.
see if that one will work there. While I'm laying this floor, I'm trying to pay attention out here to where the floorboards are so that I'm not nailing where a crack is. I'm trying to do my best. And I am putting extra nails in this floor, putting them a little closer together than I normally would, just because I want to make sure we're getting some good contact. And, you know, just in case I hit a bad spot, make sure it's good and held down. Well, we carried on into the night and we got our floor finished last night, which is awesome because we we usually take breaks and never come back to it and we're really slow, but we're determined to get this room done. And we got it done in one day. One day, and it looks beautiful. It came out so good. I'm glad we took some extra time to make sure the floor was gonna be square in the room. And that means when we worked our way over and we hit that kitchen floor, where we had one board going this way, one going this way, they lined up perfectly dead smooth. If we started just along the edge of the wall and said, oh, put it along the wall, they would have been coming to that floor at an angle like and this. And then what? We'd have to... And you would see like maybe a little unevenness, a little gappiness. It would have looked bad. Yeah, we could have gotten away with it, but it wouldn't be as clean yeah. as the finish we got. Guys, take time to get those first pieces perfect. Mm -hmm. That's what everything else relies on. We had enough flooring. In fact, we have a whole box that we never even opened. Plus yeah. extras from just extra. So we're gonna, we're gonna try to return the extra box. It's still sealed. I don't know if they'll take it, but we'll try. We don't need it sitting around. If they don't take it, then maybe we'll use it 
somewhere, some way. But we are done with hardwood flooring in our home. That's a huge thing. Yeah. That's awesome. But there's still one more floor to do. I often forget that we still have to finish the main bathroom of the house. And we do have our bathroom, the master bath finished, but almost finished. The main house bathroom, we need to do floor and walls. So I guess we still have one more room to do after all. Now today, I honestly thought we were going to get working on trim, just get up, get it going and start doing baseboards and door trim. We have the wood here, but we are off to a slow start. So we didn't start those yet. We really just, I don't know, we cleaned, did some things, and you installed all the outlet covers. Mm-hmm, I love doing that. I don't know what to film. They're <laughs> Not <laughs> me. <laughs> Get that started in there. I like this nice and straight. That's one thing I'm picky about, right? Mm -hmm. If they're like slightly crooked, it's just annoying looking. Looks good. We did the same outlets, black outlets, with the brass egg and dart style covers on, the, on there. We got our old retro vintage push button switches. Love those. And the house, man, it just feels so good. It feels... It's coming together. In fact, I'm so excited about this room. I already went online, shopped around, looking for a table, looking for odds and ends. We got a ceiling light for the room. That's something else we got to talk about. Some of you guys noticed that there was no uh, box, no outlet on the ceiling for, for a ceiling light. Our dining room was a unique situation because it's a cathedral ceiling, I guess you would call it. But it's basically the roof. Okay, it's on a low part of our house. There's, yeah, no, there's attic. no attic in it. And the roof isn't very thick. So I'm trying to maintain as much insulation in there as I can and also as little air leakage as I can because air leakage can lead to condensation, moisture problems. So I decided not to put any ceiling boxes in because that takes away a big chunk of space out of the insulation, creates a hole in your ceiling where you lose air. Instead, I wired up a special outlet in the dining room to a switch. So it does have a wall switch and we have an outlet so that we can plug in a light and we're going to be hanging a swag light. So we're going to figure out where the table's going, swag it over, down the wall, plug it in. And that is so much more functional and versatile because not only does it help our roof, but it also allows us to move our light around depending on what table we get or where we want it because we weren't exactly sure what size table we'd get and it might move closer or mm. further from the back wall we didn't know how the layout was going to be and depending on the table and the layout you could move that light and just position it on the ceiling where you want it and move it in the future if you need to so that's that was kind of the thinking behind that i did find a really cool light that I hope is going to be awesome. When I opened it and looked at it, I said, this is ridiculous. <laughs> but I think it's going to look cool. We got to see it in place. It's, it's an odd one. Man, I wish I could show you right now, but I got to surprise you. It'll look better yeah. when, we, when we hang it. I think we're going to be wrapping this up and we're going to be getting to work on the trim, but that's all we have for now. So thanks for watching. And until next time, take care. Bye.